Welcome back. We're at the halfway mark. So we're at session four of eight in Axiom Medical's Fast Track to OSHA COVID Compliance Virtual Summit that we are conducting this morning. Um, things have been going well. I think to this point, we've now covered the, the keynote address and, and that was from Dr. David Michaels. We also had the HR legal implications that, um, that Chuck covered. And then we just wrapped up with uh, Mark where he was speaking about the ESG. So I am tickled to death to be able to present um, <clears throat> this next section is going to be with Connor. Uh, Connor Trotter, he is one of our health safety supervisors and he's the area manager there. Connor's actually in New York at the moment. Um, so I think he probably has a little better than what we have here in weather than what we have right here in Texas of where I'm located. Um, but just a quick, a few quick reminders here. If you have any issues, um, technical issues while you're watching, you will notice that at the bottom of your screen, there's several little boxes down there. So if you want to locate the one that has, it looks like a question mark um, and type in your question that that you can use that space to do so. Um, one other change that's a little bit different than what we utilize uh, for our traditional webinars, and that is the Q&A session. So this time we have what are called breakout rooms. And you'll notice that looking at your screen, it's at the top, far top right corner. And so what you will do is you just press that join button and that will take you right there into the to the breakout room. You can interact face-to-face -face with, with representatives from Axiom and then after Connor wraps up his presentation, then he will join you there as well for about 30 minutes of, of a Q&A session. So uh, don't miss out on that. Even if you don't have a question, you're welcome to join. Just kind of hear what some of the other ones are. But Connor has a great uh, topic that he's going to be covering. It's always kind of the, that big fear that plays in the background, which is what do you do when if you have an unannounced OSHA inspection? Um, and the only other thing that I want to mention before before I turn it over completely to Connor is that um, after he is done and we have the, the Q&A that's there in the breakout room, you have to register. You have to have a, a link to be able to access the session number five. So if you are not already registered, um, don't worry. There's a, a box that will pop up. It's a prompt and you will just press that register now button and it will generate a attendee link for you. So Connor, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and um, so you can kind of give us some, the lowdown of what, what should be expected should OSHA arrive unannounced. Uh, thanks, Holly. Hey, everybody. Um, you know, as Holly mentioned, you know, OSHA inspections, especially unannounced, can be a little scary to, to those out there, um, especially with this new mandate coming out and with the new vaccine mandate and needing to have regular testing going on. Um, being prepared for when OSHA shows up is very important. And um, one of the best ways to prepare for that is to always be preparing on a daily basis with record keeping doing regular safety trainings and making sure that everything's in place. So whenever OSHA does arrive, you're not cut off guard. Uh, one of the most important ways to do that is to have a policy outlined uh, way in advance of what your COVID compliance is going to be. I suggest doing that as soon as possible uh, before this mandate goes out so that all of your employees know exactly what your policy is, whether that's going to be the entire team to be fully vaccinated, or if you're going to have a few employees who remain unvaccinated but have that regular weekly testing, making sure that you're practicing what you, you preach and you actually are getting those people tested as needed, and uh, making sure that you have internal audits on a regular basis, um, whether that's hiring a consultant outside of your company to come in, act out like they are an OSHA member and doing a mock OSHA inspection or doing that internally with your safety team to make sure that you're prepared whenever that does arise, if it does arise, where you have to um, have a surprise OSHA inspection. Um, one of the biggest things I can not emphasize enough is the importance of record keeping. OSHA doesn't care if you say, you know, we do safety trainings every day or, you know, we've told people they need to be wearing masks or they need to be getting tested, all those things. They want to make sure there are records of all of these items. So if every time you have a safety training, making sure that you keep record of that, what the date was, who was in attendance, all those things, making sure whenever you have that policy go out, everyone signs something saying they know what their COVID policy is. And then one of the most important things with record keeping is making sure that you have all of those records on file for vaccine status 
and testing results. Um, you know, Axiom has a couple of great tools for that with the check into work app and the vaccine vault, things of that nature. So whenever OSHA does arrive and they want records for everybody that has those vaccine status, you'll have those records on file right away so you can show them. And then also, you know, with like our check into work app and other uh, functions out there, having those test results handy so that whenever the OSHA does show up and they're like, hey, you know, is everybody that's not vaccinated getting tested every week, they're able to show them right away. Whenever the OSHA inspection, you know, actually does take place, um, whenever as soon as they arrive, you know, it's important to have already practiced, like I said before, what to do when they get there. So it's very important that you have somebody designated to be your representative for the company that is going to be there as soon as OSHA arrives, be able to speak to them. Um, and it's also important that if you have any day-to-day -day, um, practices that you do, that you do those same things with the OSHA inspector that you would with any visitor. So, you know, if you have a sign-in sheet, if you do temperature checks, health attestations every day for anybody that comes on the premises, it's very important that you actually do that with the OSHA inspector as well so that they know that you are doing these practices. And whenever you show them the policy later and it says that you do those practices, but you didn't do it with them, they're going to question that. Um, so when the opening conference starts, um, as mentioned, make sure you have that representative sit down with the OSHA inspector, you know, find out why they're there, see if it was, um, you know, maybe an employee complaint or um, something of that nature, find out exactly why they're there and what their um, intentions are uh, for the inspection, what they're trying to see. Um, it's very important in that opening conference, you know, find out exactly those things so that, um, so you know which areas they need to look at and um, be prepared for the walk around. When they are doing the walk around, um, I think it's very important, once again, for record keeping, uh, making sure that the representative or um, another representative goes along with them to keep notes of the walk around. Um, you need to, anything that the uh, OSHA inspector points out, uh, making sure that they write down what, what the OSHA inspector pointed out, um, anything that the OSHA inspector takes pictures of, make sure you're taking pictures of it as well. Um, just basically having your own records uh, to protect yourself uh, so you know exactly what went down during that walk around um, to match up with that OSHA inspector. Um, once the walk around is over, there will be a closing conference. Um, this is a very important part of the uh, OSHA inspection to make sure that you talk with the OSHA inspector, see exactly what kind of um, violations they might have seen, um, anything that you can fix, um, and be prepared for any citations that may, might be coming your way. Um, so, you know, it's very important that you have practiced all of these parts of the process of the inspection before they arrive so that whenever the inspection does happen, you aren't caught off guard and these violations don't happen. So if for some reason, you know, there is a violation, there are several different um, possibilities of consequences that can come with that. Um, one of those is the obvious, which are the financial implications, uh, which are, you know, fines, um, which can be, you know, certain increments of thousands of dollars, depending on what the violation was. Um, however, you know, there's other consequences as well. Um, you could have, you know, employees, you know, if they see that there is a health and safety violation, um, you know, they're not going to be happy that their employer is not doing what they're supposed to to protect their health and safety, uh, especially with COVID compliance nowadays. Um, and then also, you know, business and professional reputation uh, when it comes to clients um, and business partnerships, investors, stakeholders, all these different individuals, you know, they if they see that your company is not um, uh, adhering to the highest standard for health and safety on a daily basis, um, they might not want to do business with you anymore. Um, you might lose lots of business that way and not just, you know, an immediate financial, but it could be a long-term financial um, burden to you as well. Mm -hmm. Are you turning back to me, Connor, at this point? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that was great information. And you know, one of the things I was thinking about whenever you were whenever you were talking about that was um, 
we get a lot of questions that come through there specific to how it is that that um, OSHA will figure out who it is that that is going to be inspected. And I know internally we've had a lot of those discussions about whistleblowers and, you know, how is it that maybe we're going to be able to police all these things. So um, we're definitely looking at that. I'm sure everybody else is as well. But but you really you really brought up a great point where you said that that you have to really practice, not just come up with the policy, but you have to practice. And people really need to know what it is that that you have going on. Um, that really is your kind of best line of defense there, um, because obviously, if there's complaints, and that's when you may see where some of these these industries are being targeted. And, that may be where they start some of their inspections. So we'll see. Good stuff, Connor. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, guys, just again, if you have some questions for Connor, um, please make for sure that you join that breakout room. You can access that by pressing the join button. That's right there on the top right-hand side of your screen. Um, We'll mention also that at the end, whenever we, we discontinue the session, if you haven't already registered, you can do so for session number five of eight. And I actually think we're diving into, um, I think it's, yeah, we're doing data security next. So that one's always a hot topic, especially right now with all the the um, discussion regarding the OSHA mandates for reporting and, you know, kind of like the record keeping uh, resurrection, I think is kind of one of the, the term that we've heard going through. So anyways, thank you again, Connor. We appreciate it. Guys, if you haven't already registered, you can click that button and we will see you there. Thank you. Thanks.